Yeah, but I'd like to start by focusing on um, number 16, uh, clause number 16, which is the, um, the, the, the first um, of these uh, arrangements, uh, and, and go to uh, the question which was the subject of uh, an amount of discussion uh, at the second reading uh, as to conflicting claims um, and, uh, and what uh, is... Uh, made pretty clear uh, under 16.1b uh, uh, there is an ability to have a proportion of an annuity uh, going to um, more than one uh, surviving spouse uh, or partner uh, of a former Governor-General. And I think the debate... Sorry? Uh, no, annuities don't go to children. Uh, well, no, sorry, it's one of the questions, which I, it could, could well be, it is now. The member has raised for me another issue, and that is a question as to whether uh, the arrangements under Clause 10.2 uh, could in fact be in the form of an annuity, uh, which is not a lifetime annuity, but an annuity which could be inheritable. And, and, and I, I'm, I'm obliged to uh, Mr Hay for the uh, inter interjection that he's made because I hadn't contemplated uh, the possibility of, uh, of, of something which is inheritable other than in the circumstances uh, of a spouse or a, uh, of a former partner um, being amongst the, the arrangements uh, that, that could be made here. And I think one of the questions I'd, um, I, I would like to ask the Minister, because we do know uh, that on occasions, for example, a lump sum arrangements can be made for, uh, for superannuation at the, uh, at the time of the uh, death um, of a of death in office of a Governor General. Is, you know, is there a possibility um, for uh, the arrangements that have been made under 10 2, but are then disputed uh, under 16? Um, is, it, is it possible? that in that case there could be a lump sum being debated um, by children. Um, I, 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 I must say that I'd be, I'd be relatively surprised um, if, uh, if that was the case, um, because I think that Clause 9 uh, goes to spouses or, 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 or partners um, of late Governors-General, and I'd don't think it goes to children. But what I don't know is whether under Clause 10 2 the type of superannuation arrangement could be entered into um, that, that in fact involved a lump sum which could then be disputed um, but 16 wouldn't cut the mustard for a dispute because this is only for Clause 9. Disputes. So this is a this is a dispute around the annuity for a small former spouse or partner. But if clause two uh, had a lump sum arrangement, it, you know, it could well be a, a, a single governor general or or, or or someone whose wife um, or spouse or husband pre, pre sorry I, I'm being politically correct here um, uh, pre <laughs> pre deceased them. <laughs> Pre, pre deceased them, then the question is uh, whether, whether or not, um, the, if there is a dispute amongst the children or the other, the other people who are, who are um, inheriting, uh, whether there is any role uh, for a clause similar to Clause 16, because Clause 16 only deals with the Section 9 claims, uh, it's, it's appropriate, and I wonder, in fact, uh, whether. Uh, it might be worth having an amendment instead of entitled annuity under section 9, uh, whether it might be worth doing an amendment which, which said uh, or for an annuity um, pursuant to clause 10.2 uh, uh, where, where a, a, a lump sum was involved. Um, because I, I, I think Simon Power would, uh, would agree with me that it would be a little bit ugly uh, if we had the children of um, a former Governor General in, in, in the High Court uh, in dispute uh, on, the, on the will 
uh, of a governor general. But, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, um, in in um, in court on the on the on the will um, of the former governor general, especially the part of the will um, that was uh, a lump sum arrangement uh, that I think we have now agreed could come from 10-2. So the question to the to the minister, who I know, is avidly following. Uh, avidly following this bill is whether 16 uh, should include a reference in conflicting claims uh, to 10 2 as well as 9. Um, and and I, I can see some shaking of the heads at the, at the back of the room, but, but so far no minister has been a, able to explain to me why, why a 10 2 arrangement could not include a lump sum. And if it did include a lump sum and there were conflicting claims to, to, to who that lump sum should be paid to, uh, uh, there, there should be a mechanism for sorting it out because, as, um, as the Minister has done, there is a, uh, a, a clause uh, in 16.1 or 2 um, uh, for essentially apportioning uh, where in, in the multiple wives or partners um, arrangement. Uh, and that, you know, I think that's, um, I think that's, that's fair. I think generally, um, in the, the way that these things work, I would hope that our clause 16.1 would not be brought into play. I mean, I, you know, I think having the uh, uh, having the authority uh, uh, to do it um, is uh, is important. Um, who the other the next question is uh, is who is the authorised person? Under uh, this sort of arrangement, uh, and under and, and clause 16, it is not clear uh, who the authorised person is. I, uh, I'm, um, have, I, I, my view is that it shouldn't be a public servant. I mean, the idea of a of a serving public servant uh, making a decision in relation to uh, the appropriate payments to the wives of a former governor general. And, and they could be wives seriatim, or they could be wives um, at the same time. And, and we've had, we have had this we have had this discussion about uh, the possibility of whether John Key and his moving in this bill uh, is taking a liberal view and looking to the future, uh, where there could be a Mormon uh, governor general uh, or a Muslim governor general, where people have properly, according to the laws in which they have lived in a country. Uh, which they have visited or, or, or lived in, married, uh, and married, and have a polygamous arrangement. Uh, and, if, and, and while that is not recognised uh, in New Zealand law, I think many of us, many of us will be aware through our constituency cases uh, of, of that sort. Sorry? Uh, well, I, I, I don't think there's... I don't know. I, I, I speak... In fact, Tim Grosser could be the one. I think Tim, Tim was. Tim Grosser, the, the, the member's friend Tim Grosser, was the one who had multiple Muslim marriages. And I don't know if they were, if they, if they were serially or concurrently. And according to the law of the country that he was living in at the time, they could, in fact, have been concurrent. Uh, and, and, and if, so we might have a good example here. What, if, if at some unusual point, I mean, he's got the voice for Governor General of the, of the sort that I can remember when I was a kid. Um, I, if, if Tim Grosser at some, on some occasion became Governor General, um, would this clause be the one to sort out the claims of the relative wi the wives, um, including both serially and concurrently? Uh, but but leaving, leaving that aside, because I, I understand that. Um, there's been a change of faith and, and, and a change of relationships in that, in that case. Can I, can I ask whether it is the intention of the, um, of the government that this uh, clause be, be used uh, for, for that uh, sort of arrangement? The other, the other, the other question, um, yeah, which I think is, uh, is an important one that, that, that we do need to uh, work through is who is the authorised person? And it's a, one. It's an answer that either Mr. Hayes or uh, uh, Mr. What's his name? Heatley. Heatley. Mr. Heatley, who's currently acting Prime Minister. New uh, member. Sorry. New member. 
uh, who, who Mr. Heath, uh, no, no, he's, he's, been, he's been around a while, he's just slightly forgettable as to his name. Um, but if, if either of them could answer uh, who the authorised person